The universe is everything, from the tiniest particles to the galaxies to the very existence of space, time and life. But how did it all begin? Is the universe actually infinite or just very large? Did it have a beginning? We are physically limited, but our mind are free to explore the whole universe. In Hinduism, the universe is millions of years old. In line with the Hindu belief in incarnation, the universe we live in is not the first or indeed the last universe. From Hindus, the universe was created by Brahma, the creator who made the universe out of himself. After Brahma created the world, it is the power of Vishnu which preserved the world and human beings. At part of the cycle of birth, life and death, it is Shiva who will ultimately destroy the universe. This is not necessary as bad as this might sound because it allowed Brahma to start the process of creation all over again. This is one of the creation myth from many and every religion have their own story. Try to answer the question we all ask. Why are we here? Where did we come from? In 1915. Einstein introduced his revolutionary general theory of relativity. In this, space and time were no longer absolute, no longer a fixed background to events. They were defined only within the universe. So it made no sense to talk of time before the universe. It would be like asking for a point south of the south pole. It is not defined. Einstein's theory of relativity gave us a better understanding of gravity. And Edwin Hubble discovered that universe is expanding. And also, in 1964, Cosmic microwave background radiation were discovered which is a remnant from an early stage of the universe also known as the relic radiation which together with the other observational evidence made the Big Bang theory. First of all, Big Bang was not an explosion. It was all space stretching every all at once. The Big Bang theory states that the universe began as a hot and infinitely dense point. As our understanding has developed, we have come to realize that our universe is expanding and with our current technology, we can say that with a relative certainty, the Big Bang occurred about 13.7 billion years ago. We are used to the idea that events are caused by earlier events, which in turn are caused by still earlier events. There is a chain of causality stretching back into past, but suppose this chain has a beginning. Suppose there was a first event, what caused it? One would have to invoke an outside agency which for convenience one can call God. This was not a question that many scientists wanted to address. They tried to avoid it either by claiming that the universe did not have a beginning or by maintaining that the origin of the universe did not lie within the realm of science but belonged to metaphysics or religion. Roger Penrose was awarded the 2020 Nobel Prize in Physics. He said, the Big Bang was not the beginning. There was something before the Big Bang and that something is what we will have in our future. According to Penrose, the Big Bang actually began with something which was the remote future of a previous aeon. The universe begin with the singularity was not an idea that people were happy about. The reason Einstein's general relativity break down near the Big Bang is that it is what is called a classical theory. That is, it implicitly assumed what seems obvious from common sense that each particle had a well-defined position and a well-defined speed. In such a so-called classical theory, if one knows the position and speed of all particles in the universe at one time, one can calculate what they would be at any other time in past or future. However, in the early 20th century, scientists discovered that they couldn't calculate exactly what would happen over very short distances. It wasn't just that they needed better theory, there seems to be a certain level of randomness or uncertainty in the nature that cannot be removed, however good our theories. It can be summed up in the uncertainty principle that was proposed in 1927 by the German scientist Werner Heisenberg. I already made a video on uncertainty principle, link is in the description below. Uncertainty principle says, one cannot accurately predict both the position and the speed of a particle. The more accurately the position is predicted, the less accurately you will be able to predict the speed and vice versa. Einstein objected strongly to the idea that the universe governed by a chance. His feelings were summed up in his dictum, God does not play dice. But all the evidence is that God is quite a gambler. The universe is like giant casino, with dice being rolled or wheel being spun. A casino owner risks losing money each time dice are thrown or the roulette wheel is spun. But over a large number of bets, the odds average out and the casino owner makes sure they average out in his or her favor. That's why casino owners are so rich. The only chance you have of winning against them is to stake all your money on a few rolls of the dice or spin of the wheel. It's the same with the universe. When the universe is big, there are very large number of rolls of the dice and the results average out to something one can predict. But when the universe is very small, near the Big Bang, there are only a small number of rolls of the dice and the uncertainty principle is very important. In order to understand the origin of the universe, one therefore has to incorporate the uncertainty principle 
into Einstein's theory of general relativity. This has been the great challenge in theoretical physics. Scientists haven't solved it yet, but they made a lot of progress. Now suppose we try to predict the future, but due to Heisenberg uncertainty principle, we cannot make precise prediction about the future position and speed of a particle. We can only assign probability to a particular combination of a position and speed. Thus universe must have many possible histories, each with its own probability. There is a history of the universe where you rule the earth. I know it sounds like a science fiction, but it is now accepted as science fact. It is due to Richard Feynman who worked at the California Institute of Technology. Feynman's approach to understand how things work is to assign to each possible history a particular probability and use this idea to make prediction. It works spectacularly well to predict the future. Now scientists are working to combine Einstein's theory of general relativity and Feynman's idea of multiple world histories into a complete unified theory that will describe everything that happens in the universe but the unified theory will not itself tell us how the universe began or what its initial state was. For that we need something extra, we require what are known as boundary conditions, things that tell us what happens at the frontier of the universe, the ages of space and time. String theory which is our best candidate for a complete unified theory allow a very large number of possible histories for the universe. Most of these histories are quite unsuitable for the development of intelligent life. Either they are empty or too short lasting or highly curved or wrong in some other way. Yet according to Richard Feynman's multiple histories idea, these unhabitated histories might have a quite a high probability. If you don't know about string theory, I already made a video on that, link is in the description below. We really don't care how many histories there may be that doesn't contain intelligent being. We are interested only in the subset of histories in which intelligent life develops. The intelligence life need not be anything like humans, Peter Greenman would do as well. In fact, they might do rather better. The human race does not have a very good record of intelligent behavior. It is a common experience that we live in three-dimensional space. But why is a space three-dimensional? Why isn't two or four or some other number of dimensions like in science fiction? In fact, in string theory, space has ten dimensions as well as the one dimension for time. But it is thought that seven of them spatial dimension are curled up very small, leaving three dimension large and nearly flat. Why don't we live in a history in which eight of this dimension are curled up small, leaving only two dimensions that we notice? A two-dimensional animal would have a hard job digesting food. The poor creature would fall apart. Two flat directions are not enough for anything as complicated as intelligent life. There is something special about the three dimension. In three dimensions, planet can have stable orbit around star. This is consequences of gravitational obeying the inverse square law, as discovered by Robert Hooke in 1665 and elaborated by Sir Isaac Newton. Think about the gravitational attraction of two bodies at a particular distance. If that distance is doubled, then the force between them is divided by 4. If the distance is tripled, then the force is divided by 9. If quadrupled, the force is divided by 16 and so on. This leads to stable planetary orbits. Now let's think about four space dimension. Their gravitation would obey an inverse cube law. If the distance between two bodies is doubled, then the gravitational force would be divided by 8, triple by 27 and if quadruple by 64. This change to an inverse cube law prevents planets from having stable orbit around their sun. They would either fall into the sun or escape to the outer darkness and cold. Similarly, the orbit of electron in atom would not be stable, so matter as we know it would not exist. Thus, although the multiple histories idea would allow any number of nearly flat directions, only histories with three flat directions will contain intelligent beings. Only in such histories will the question be asked, why does space have three dimensions? Another important thing to discuss is quantum fluctuation. Quantum fluctuation is the temporary random change in the amount of energy in a point in space. Quantum fluctuation occurs as a consequence of uncertainty principle. Furthermore, these fluctuations were seed for structure in our universe, galaxies, stars and us. Now look at this image. The Planck satellite released its first microwave radiation map of the entire sky. A single image captured both our own cosmic backyard the Milky Way galaxy that we live in, but also the subtle imprint of the Big Bang from which the whole universe emerged. The Milky Way galaxy dominates the center of the image. The blue light is a dust in this galaxy and the red is hot gas. The yellow spotted area are the cosmic microwave background radiation, which is the oldest light in the universe. It was emitted 400,000 years after the Big Bang and reveals the information about how galaxies first began to form. We are the product of quantum fluctuation in the very early universe. Turns out God really does play dice. String theory predicts that a great many universes were created out of nothing, corresponding to the many different possible histories. 
There is a still hope that we see the first evidence for string theory at the LHC particle accelerator, the Large Hadron Collider at the CERN in Geneva. In 2012, the discovery of the Higgs particle by LHC was announced. This was the first discovery of new elementary particle in the 21st century. There is still some hope that the LHC will discover supersymmetry. But even if the LHC does not discover any new elementary particles, supersymmetry might still be found in the next generation of accelerators that are presently being planned. Hubble telescope was a remarkable success. And in this year, we'll see launch of the long-awaited James Webb Space Telescope. Webb is designed to look deeper into space to see the earliest stars and galaxies that form in the universe, possibly back to 100 million years. Perhaps we will allow us to unlock the secret of the beginning of space and time, or maybe it will just give us more questions to answer. There may be other universes, but we may never be able to explore them. We have seen something about the origin of the universe, but that leaves two big questions. Will the universe end? Is the universe unique? We have many hypotheses that end the universe, like Big Freeze, in which continued expansion result in a universe to approach absolute zero, or Big Crunch, in which if there is more than a certain amount of matter, then gravitational attraction between galaxies will slow down the expansion, eventually start falling toward each other, that will end the universe. But don't worry, we have billions of years before this happens. There are many things we still don't know. But what we do know is that the universe as we know it started here and gave birth to particles, galaxies, stars, the earth and you. Since we ourselves are made of dead star, we are not separated from the universe, we are part of it. So what do you think? Has our universe been around forever? Did we come from a black hole? Or are we living in just one of countless universes? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Peace.